Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo CEO and founder Ashkan Garbus-Rushan to discuss YouTube, allegedly, getting out of the premium space. So, what? Well, I don't even know where to start. What? Why did they get in? Why are they getting out? What's the deal? Sure, so right now, I think you are seeing a focus to where you're strong. So YouTube is known for what? They're not really known for these scripted house of cards like productions. They're known for the stuff that you find on YouTube, right? So the size of YouTube is like this whole studio. It's a universe. And the people that care about those scripted projects is like this big. And then the people that you are mean willing on specifically on YouTube? Or? Yeah, specifically yeah. on YouTube, who turn to YouTube for that. And then the people who are willing to pay for it is another small ball. So those balls don't really connect that much. Um, if they are going to take out their wallet to pay for that kind of programming, they're going to do it on Netflix or Amazon, or they're getting the Amazon through Prime. So a few years ago, that was in the scenario. A few years ago was like the Studio 54 era. Everybody was kind of trying to do everything with everyone. And when YouTube, parent Google, would see Netflix starting to grow in terms of subscribers and stock price, well, then they would get out in front of the you know, Wall Street and analysts and say, well, hey, Netflix is this shiny new object. We're also shiny. We got this thing called YouTube Red and YouTube Premium and YouTube this and that. Might as well call it Crapster. Now, this is actually smart of YouTube, I feel, not to play in that sandbox. Because YouTube would never move the needle on its subscri subscription business. And as we alluded to in Business Battleground, um, there's two very different points of views on the future of media and how they view video. YouTube is free ad supported, Netflix is subscription. The world is big enough, and I think this is the right decision if they get out of it. Right. Well, I mean, they did have some success. Like, they have, <clears throat> well, one success with Cobra Kai, but. Didn't Here's the problem it? it doesn't move the needle. And I don't want to be like, nobody cares. Like Cobra Kai, gate, uh, Cobra Kai, great hit, great thing to talk about, does not move the needle. Like at a very different scale, we're known for top tens. We ourselves want to expand. I never want as an entrepreneur or storyteller to be told, stay in your lane. But it's like if we started to all of a sudden do something that was radically different, people wouldn't care. And I think at YouTube scale, it becomes a bit of a distraction. And two, um, they will never be able to out Netflix or out Amazon, Amazon. And I think they know that, well, Netflix and Amazon aren't going to come on their turf, so they'd rather double down. They make something like $15 billion a year from ad-supported content on YouTube. I would have said, though, that Amazon could never out Netflix Netflix, and they're, they're not out Netflixing them, but they're getting there. Ah, great point. There's a difference there. Amazon, first of all, let's back up. Technology companies and big internet platforms don't like content. They like content as much as I, I like the plague. Like it's not what they do. It's not, they're not in it for any reason that's like pure. Uh, and I don't mean pure like violin music, like any reason that's like, oh, I like this or it makes business sense. There's always a means to an end. Uh, and some of it is to differentiate. So Amazon had Prime. Amazon had like this massive base of subscribers already paying it. So to kind of further differentiate, and when you're making so much money, like Amazon makes so much money that they're like, hey, another round of shrimp cocktail, you know, even though they're allergic to shrimp, basically. <laughs> so they had Prime to bolster, to bolt that on. Then it makes sense. YouTube, nobody pays for it. You know, if YouTube went with like a shinier advertising product and told advertisers, here's this other shiny project, advertisers would eat it up, which is what you're seeing now. You got pre-roll, you got mid-roll. Wow, mind blown. But for them to say, we got success with audiences, ad-supported content, and marketers love us, so we're gonna go get audience. I would never, I love YouTube. Everything we own, we own to YouTube. Even when I criticize YouTube, and I hope you're listening, YouTube brass, <laughs> it's actually a compliment to YouTube's strengths. But, you know, I never, as a parent of a 10 and eight year old, like a few years ago when we said, okay, let's just get Netflix, because I wasn't, I didn't have any time to watch Netflix shows, but we got it because my daughter's like Peppa Pig and, you know, Joe the Train. I know it's not Joe the Train, I'm kidding, but you get it, right? You are gonna take out your wallet because you're like Netflix, automatically take out the credit card. YouTube, I've never thought association credit card. It just doesn't go together. So, so it's like pulling teeth trying to get people to pay for a service they're absolutely. already not paying. It's like the world spinning in the other direction. Yeah. For, it's not boiling the ocean. 
It's the world going the other direction. It just won't happen. So how does this affect audiences? Does it? Do they care? So, no, audiences could care less. And I feel like it's basically journalists are going to have a field day. Most, most normal people on YouTube don't even know probably about YouTube Red unless it's like, do you want to subscribe to YouTube Premium Red? No, thanks. Let's move on. I will tell you where it might affect. Uh, Matt Guilin, who I call him like the YouTube anthropologist, like we had a chit chat on, on LinkedIn public, by the way, so everybody saw this. Uh, he said, well, how does this impact YouTube TV? I said, nothing. YouTube TV is for people who want ABC, NBC, our cord cutters, they're gonna pay for it. He's like, I meant long term. I said, ah, yes, long term, once you build a base through aggregation, you need some original differentiated content. They should just go out and buy something. Buy Lionsgate, buy whatever. Like, that's the path for them. They're never gonna do it. Stop thinking that because you code, because you're an engineer, you could get in the content business. It's so ridiculous. It's like if I all of a sudden got up at the office and was like, hey, you're all great at editing and storytelling, yada yada, but now we're gonna go and build this great search engine. It's ridiculous. It's as ridiculous as that, right? So audiences won't really notice or care. Uh, and I think YouTube eventually will just go buy something. And same thing with Apple. I think Apple eventually, if they're really serious, they should go out and buy something. Now, whether that something is Netflix or that something is Alliancegate, doesn't matter. They should just buy it. They're not, it's not in their DNA. Did I see that the, the YouTube <coughs> subscription service is pivoting to music? Well, YouTube has always been more of a music platform without people knowing. And I think the greatest, what is that line from... Honoré de Balzac, uh, he had this big thick book that I would pretended to read in high school. <laughs> but basically it goes, behind every great fortune is a crime. YouTube is a music thing that started with some piracy and some other stuff that just masquerades itself as a video platform. YouTube is a music, uh, is a music platform by and large. And you got these cute influencers who have their following and they've great, built these great franchises for themselves. But the tonnage on YouTube has always been Vivo channels and gaming, absolutely gaming. Uh, but Vivo, you know, like what are the biggest channels? You got PewDiePie and then you got Taylor Swift, Eminem, yada, yada, yada. So I think what you're referring to is Susan Wojcicki at some point, the CEO of YouTube said, yeah, yeah, we know we haven't had that much success in creating originals and getting people to pay for it. But that's because we've always been about music, which is like a great, that's why she's the CEO. That's a Fair great enough. answer, props. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think people go to YouTube not to pay you know, for originals. And the sooner they realize that, and it's easier for the execs because there's this awkwardness where YouTube is crushing it every day. They're winning. They're destroying the competition. But yet they got this kind of blip on the report card, which is why, have, why don't people subscribe? Just stop setting yourself up to fail. That's not why people come to YouTube. Fair enough. So did you guys pay for YouTube Red? Actually, I want more than the zero people that are going to comment to comment. So let us know what you think in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you next time.